Welcome back to Create for Americans. Nick here, and I am ready. Finally, it's been a long time. I apologize for that. To check out episode four of Bodyline. Now, again, the way I have it broken down, 20 minute increments, there's seven total. So we're at that uh, halfway to when we're done, past halfway point. Appreciate those who have been patient with me and been coming back for each installment. If you missed any of the other reactions, I've got one through three parts. So the first 60 minutes of this mini series checked out and reacted to in its full entirety. Check it out on the channel if you want. But for right now, I'm excited to get into episode four. Um, I'm looking for a little more of the, the drama, the byline part itself. But I'm assuming they're going to save that for the end. But all the tables have been set. You got these three guys, these three athletes, one Australian, two English, who are ready to uh, to play against one another internationally, and we'll see what happens. With that being said, if you're excited for this reaction, if you like this reaction, anything like that, it would do me a huge favor if you hit that like button, and also that subscribe button if you've not done so yet. And uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this now. <laughs> Sir. Eight months short of his 21st birthday, Don Bradman has become the youngest player ever to score a century in a test match. England won this match in the 1928-29 series. Wow. But in Bradman, Australia undoubtedly has the keystone around whom the team of the next generation will be built. And so, so after an absence of almost six months, the English team came home. It was a glorious Long morning, trip. late in spring, and what a welcome they got. For they were the victors, defeating Australia four tests to one, retaining the ashes, Jeez. and proving yet again that in cricket, as in most things, England reigns supreme. Doesn't but happen too often anymore these Dr. days. You've acquitted yourself admirably. Thank you, my lord. Come and tell me all the details of these centuries of yours. I'm so glad. Oh, I need these. Uh, today would evoke a thousand memories for Plum Warner. Hello. How delightful Hello, to see you. Hello, dear Warner. Plum. My dear lady. Uh, congratulations, my, dear, lady. my well. dear fellow. Splendid tour. First rate batting average. Your parents must be very proud. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Jardine. Uh, Percy oh, George has just been telling me about young Bradman. Hello, Victor, Victor goes to spoils. Really? What a grand day. That's not what Percy was saying. I think I'm about Talking to Talking trash? Excuse me. Oh. How dare you talk about Bradman that way? trying to persuade him, but he still can't see the truth. And what truth is that, Douglas? Well, like most batsmen, I can play one or perhaps two shots to any given ball, whereas Bradman can choose between four or five. Oh, he doesn't choose. He just plays the first shot that comes into his head. But he has no technique. Now, he can get away with this on those true, hard Australian pitches, but put him on one of our green strips, with Morris <laughs> seaming the ball late, Oh, no, he's too unorthodox. That opinion did not I'll age well. Oh, uh, not that again. Now, it's a very good example, Douglas. Now, on at least three occasions, the ball was short-pitched, screaming out to be hooked. He played a cover drive. Oh, it's absurd. Oh, how no, it's dare not he play a cover drive? At least two of those balls went for four. That's the power of Brett. He's learned that a batsman's sole objective is to score runs. And he'll play whatever shot, unorthodox or not, which best fulfills that purpose. It makes it almost impossible to set a field to him. Well, I'm sorry, old chap, but I think you're on your own. Well, the skipper agrees with Percy and says Bradman's just a flash in the pan. And Tate says that he'll have to... You better hope so as an England fan, but unfortunately... Plays on one of our wet wickets. Exactly. They're older this men man's correct. the conventional methods of play. Oh, thank you very much. Bradman is something totally new. He's not interested in playing classic shots. He's never had any formal training, so he's developed his own style, a unique approach. I believe if he continues to develop, we could see scores none of us have ever dreamed of. He could rewrite the record books. <laughs> he could change the very nature of the game. No, oh, come, come, Douglas. That's He's being honest. He's a very fair competitor. No batsman in the world has ever done that. I must say, in fairness, very, very there fair are competitor. hundreds of thousands of Australians who'd agree with Douglas. Out there, he's become quite a celebrity. 
It's not a very pleasant sight, Bradman standing in the middle of the pitch, bat raised, the crowd chanting his name. As a society, they seem to crave heroes. Well, I like Australians. I mean, it's just that they like prize individualism. Oh, indeed, they continually want to elevate one man at the expense of the team. I find it quite abhorrent. Well, it's mm. certainly not okay. the nature of the I game. See. The heart is the team. I'm afraid the Australians wouldn't agree with you there, my lord. Their whole approach to cricket is different. At times, I wondered if we were playing the same game I'd grown up with. To listen to the crowd, you'd think it was a, a hunt with the English as the fox. No, you were used to that. It's just good-natured barracking. Well, questioning a man's parentage is hardly good-natured. <laughs> <laughs> My dear fellow, in Australia, it's it much worse. Is almost a term of My friend, much worse. Well, I come from a different world, thank God. The Australians are not a people I'll ever warm to. Nothing wrong with that. Always easier to give a hiding to a man you dislike. May I interrupt? I really yeah, do feel like a crickety widow over there. Or at least the English Haven't you finished talking about the game yet? Not quite. Never. Mr. Fender and I have something to discuss. Do we, my lord? Yes. Yes, you do. What's that? Chop, chop. Journalism. Ah, do I detect a note of indifference bordering on aversion, my lord? Now, don't start that banter with me. I found your reporting, your criticisms of Chapman, most distasteful. Now, doesn't matter what your opinion of him is, he is the English skipper. He deserves your respect. It ill behoves you as a county captain and a man who's represented England to us. I've met many people it's like this older guy right here. In the comment section. section. It was my job to report it. I am not talking And it's the way I see it, too. I am talking about loyalty. That is all I ask of a man. Uh, this is not very from interesting. Not a journalist, perhaps, but from a cricketer and a gentleman. Do you understand? Very oh, interesting. Understand. But I don't agree. Been there. Oh, well, I'm not staying here to argue with you. I've made my point. But make no mistake. These things do not go unnoticed. I never believed they did. Well, then, why must you always be giving offense? Why must you be the tear away? Why all this affectation? <laughs> not affectation, my lord. It's me nature. I suppose I could be a little more diplomatic. But I've always thought diplomacy a blood brother to hypocrisy. Honesty is one of the things I like about Percy George Fender. He may not be perfect, but at least I can live with him. He's a really good actor. I'm surprised I didn't notice it earlier. That was a master class right there. The way he looked truly offended and oh, no, embarrassed. And then he held his own. Behavior, personality. That's all. Why? Even right now, very interesting. Douglas, there's one thing you must learn about the Lords. In defeat, they're unbearable. In victory, insufferable. Hey ho. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go? Yes. No, he lost it. He was in the zone for a while. He just lost it. But that was really impressive. Very, very good acting. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if he was uh, theater trained, so to speak, <laughs> as an actor. Marco Polo out of the water? Oh, you evil person. It was 1929, the Jazz Age, and our lives spun from one carefree oh. moment to the next. He's a blocker. Every day we stretched out our hands further, trying to gather into our arms all the glittering prizes of our youth. And yet there was a brittleness in our laughter, a fever to our lives. It was as if we knew deep within some recess of our minds that nothing which ran so fast could run for long. Like shuffle. Around the world, there was a gathering darkness waiting to close in. The greatest oh. depression the world had ever known, not only of an economy, but of men's spirits. Just as one generation had been destroyed by the Great War, so the next was crushed by the depression. It's tough back then. One in five people in the end, out of World work, War II, industry swept away, less than 10 years whole away. towns devastated, hunger, rationing, and the dole. For many people, there was one thing which helped relieve the misery of their daily lives, and that thing was sport. In such a climate, the Australian test side arrived in England in April of 1930. 
Among the team were 11 cricketers making their first overseas tour. All of them so young, they were immediately christened in honor of their manager, Kelly's Kreish. By any measure, it would prove to be a remarkable test series, one which those who witnessed it would never forget. You see, Don Bradman is about to rewrite the record book. That's fine, thanks. I love the narration. Unfortunately, it kind of gives a little too much away, but I still yes, like sir. it. Thanks. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Is no. he ordering four for himself? <laughs> Good evening, Lovely chap. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, welcome. welcome. May I introduce Mr. Oh. Percy Fender, skipper of Surrey. The finest captain never to have captained England. Oh, thank <laughs> you very much, Bill. How are you, Alan? <laughs> Does he? Pleased to see you. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, we didn't actually meet in 28. I feel as though I know you, though. I've read most of your articles. Oh, that's more than I have. <laughs> Hello. Um, nice to see you. Hello. Here? I think you once described me as a schoolboy batsman. Ah, as a journalist will. On the other hand, Douglas here is a He has avoided it like yes, there's no tomorrow. Oh, it has led to countless arguments. I think you're in for a surprise. Well, we'll see soon enough. Day after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Surrey has a very good record against Australian teams. I think we'll give you a run for your money. We'll look forward to it. All the best, guys. Good luck, Bill. You too, Percy. I love seeing that little fire there in Bradman. How about the schoolboy giving him a cane? Yep. Do it on the field, homie. So what is this? Like, he's not on the national team, so it's like a practice session before the, the series starts. I mean, it's obviously a chance for Fender to eat his words. He doesn't have much of a run-up, he must be a spinner. Got him in two minds, Percy. Doesn't know whether he hit you for a four or a six. <laughs> That's a great line. Oh, I love that line. I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> oh, look at him at silly point. I don't think he's in a slip. <laughs> he's messing with them. Oh, this poor man. How dare you? Could you imagine the people I talk trash about? I would get destroyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And what a fool he made of me. He put every ball exactly where he wanted, where it would cause me the most humiliation. Uh, don't worry, Percy. We've forgotten in a month. He's going to destroy every bowler in the land. As I said, he's unique, a phenomenon. Oh, nobody said we weren't warm. Oh, well done, DR. <laughs> it's going to be a bleak summer. It will indeed. England's only hope is to think broadly, develop a new strategy, one aimed solely at curbing Bredman. <laughs> you think so? I think our only hope is prayer. At least God is an Englishman. <laughs> is he? Or has that changed too? It's definitely changed, homie. God is for all people. It's not nationality. Nothing, if anything, Hebrew. Day after day, new records fell before Bradman's bat. The youngest batsman to score 2,000 runs in a season, the fastest century in test history, the fastest double century ever, the highest score ever made in a test. It was history in the making. And on and on it went, this 21-year-old boy 21 driving the English crowds to delight, the journalists to hyperbole, and the cricketing lords to despair. <laughs> I love that. Might as well throw stones at the rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> Perhaps you want to change the rules, make a little bugger better for handicap. All we can do is pray for rain. Yeah, exactly. That's... True fan. 
couldn't he be asked to use a smaller bat? Why? Bradman wins, yes. Every cricket fan should watch this. I mean, along with me if you want, or on your own. Because Bradman does not Thanks have too to many Brian, videos dedicated to him. English cricket was in despair. As Douglas had predicted, he had succeeded in amassing scores other people had never even dreamt of. Worse still, Bradman had led the Australians, who had arrived as underdogs, to victory. The Ashes were now on their way to Australia, where it seemed they would remain, if not forever, at least until Bradman gave up cricket. Wow. <laughs> no hope! As long as Bradman's there. How old is he? 21? That's right. Talk about a depression. Another 20 years of Bradman. <laughs> These guys oh, are awesome. God. And not a bowler to trouble him, let alone stop him. Not Tate, not Peebles, not even Larwood, Douglas. Larwood? He heads the casualty list. Bradman's finished his career. Wow. Thanks a lot. There's no profit in talking about individuals. He's the best though. ever. Like waiting Can't judge war, that. Worrying about an entrance. Well, that's who does the fighting. Yes, but wars are won by generals. The first thing you need is a strategy. That's easy to oh, say. Oh, no, here it chance. comes. But I don't think there's a strategy in cricket to contain Bradman. Not to contain him, to neutralize oh. him. Oh, that is preposterous, Douglas. The boy's a genius. A perfect combination of, of reaction, footwork, stroke making. Yes, exactly. And intelligence. He's the best batsman in the world, no doubt. But the perfect sportsman hasn't been born yet. Every athlete has a weakness. That's true. Very comforting, old boy. But unfortunately, you can't bowl him out with platitudes. No plum or anything else. We wouldn't listen when Douglas talked of him rewriting the record books. Perhaps we should, now that he's talking of a weakness. I don't claim to know what it is, but I'm sure it's there. You have to find it. That's the first step. On it can be built a strategy. Now, no cricketer, no matter how great, whose skills don't contribute to that strategy, should be in the English team. This country led the world into the industrial age. What you have to do now is to design another machine. A cricketing machine. A whole team designed to beat one man. Well, I think he's that good. I can't see it myself. Even assuming he has a chink in his armor, it would leave you too weak in other areas. The best teams have always contained a diversity of skills. Good point. Well, what Douglas is advocating is putting all your players in one basket. I know that, Plum, but if you don't beat Bradman, you can't beat Australia. You tried bowling him out. Now you have to think him out. So interesting. He was that dominant that they couldn't figure out anything to do. They're having a mean about what to do about one man. No. Troublesome times, gentlemen. Yes, another riot today in Manchester. Well, little wonder. Unemployment nearly 20%. I was thinking rather more of Bradman. Oh. Oh. oh, yes, he's a problem too. Problem? <laughs> you might just as well take up tennis. Come on now. You know the British never surrender even when their backs are to the wall. You were Secretary of War. Where's your fight? Oh, I've got plenty of fight. But the only way I can see to get Bradman out is to send in a couple of battalions. <laughs> uh, according Jeez. to young Jardine, the infantry is useful, but wars are won by generals. What England must have is a clear strategy. Go on. That's the sort of thinking we need. Well, he says, if you can't bowl Bradman out, you must think him out. He has this idea of designing an entire team to exploit Bradman's weakness. What weakness? Oh, well, that's what it falls apart. <laughs> Jardine's rather like a physicist talking about the atom. He's never actually seen it, but he's absolutely certain it exists. So well, now, just don't dismiss it. If your physicist had done that, the atom would never have been discovered. I'm going to see young Jardine. It's just a theory, really. I saw him in the last test at the Oval. It was a damp wicket. Fading light. Larwood got up a lot of pace. The ball was rising sharply. Bradman started to look uncomfortable. Well, what batsman wouldn't? But every time he has faced Larwood, he's hit him all over the field. Yes. 
Well, you were right about one thing. You always said that he had changed the whole nature of the game. Now we have to find a whole new approach. That's the challenge. Who is there can meet it? Well, England has some fine skippers. Who? Oh. Chapman? Wyatt? They had their chances this summer. Inadequate. Yesterday's men playing yesterday's game. Dismissed so quickly. It's uh, one know, series, that's crazy. You have many fine qualities yourself, Douglas, both as a man and as a cricketer, qualities that could be useful to England. Here's your opportunity, pal. As, as long as you had never been captain of a county team. Ah, oh, are you kidding me? You stop right there, you evil, evil thing, you. Wow. So that Bradman conversation is quite interesting because, first of all, you did beat Australia in Australia when they had Bradman. Maybe he wasn't superstar Bradman, but you were able to. And they said he got a century. He was their top scorer. He was still doing great things. It's interesting that things were so dire in their minds that they had to like change everything. And I get that. As a fan, I get that. But as someone that's running a team or who has some influence in a team, you got to have some faith in your players, don't you think? Like, they're talking about, what's his name, Larwood? I always forget his name. And he's done because Bradman just sliced him up and ate him up and chewed him out. But maybe in the next match, he does a lot better. Who knows? I mean, there are certain athletes that have other athletes' numbers for sure. But to me, I'm just like, holy cow, you guys are a bunch of quitters for crying out loud. And uh, not just that, but Jardine wants to build an entire team around one player. An entire team. Like, what, are those guys not going to play when you play other nations? Maybe this is a time where it's only South Africa and a few other nations. I'm not sure how many. But you're going to have one team for Bradman in Australia, one team for someone else? I mean, it, it's crazy. Like, we can't bowl them out. What well, says who? I know you keep trying. Those averages was 100, so obviously it wasn't too successful, but... They're trying to find a week. I mean, they're doing everything. Now, I am surprised. I will say this. I am surprised that they're not whining and crying, saying, oh, he's cheating somehow. He's got to be cheating somehow. That's how it is. Check his shoes. Check his bat. Check his gloves. He's doing something to cheat. I'm glad they didn't go that way. But Jardine, I like this, this segment, this fourth installment, because Jardine, you know, the, the wheels are turning, right? The wheels are turning. He's like, got to figure out something. And this is going to lead to the byline, which is exactly what I wanted. I love this episode. It went by literally in five minutes, even though it was 20 minutes. It was so quick. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what your impressions are of what we've seen so far. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, adios.